Good morning, my friends. Today is a very rainy day in Southern California. I had some thoughts on my mind. Um, yesterday, I was just sitting outside and I was writing down whatever came to me. Um, and there was one little, I don't know if you call it an aphorism, but or just a concise thought or a meme, or read it to you. And then what I discovered today while opening up a volume of Oscar Wilde. So I wrote down, in many ways, civilization acts as a mold for man, forcing him to conform to its rigid ideas of what it defines as human. Therefore, the artist, like the prophet, like the criminal, must live outside the bounds of civilization in order to freely express themselves. I've had this idea um, of the conflict between civilization and our humanity. I'm trying to formulate my ideas and trying to put it into concise language. That was just a first draft. But the idea is that civilization, how it is structured, is generally as a mold which keeps your humanity within certain bounds, right? You cannot do this. You cannot do that. You cannot explore your consciousness with psychedelics. You cannot talk to people in a certain way. And for many reasons, that is actually good. It keeps us from harming one another. But it also keeps us from freely expressing ourselves, freely thinking, when it becomes too rigid. Um, and perhaps one of the reasons America has appeared as a shining light in the past, maybe not today, or the West has appeared as a shining light, maybe not today, is that uh, generally, Compared to the other countries, people in the West have enjoyed a greater freedom of thinking, a greater freedom of uh, behavior, a greater freedom of um, livelihood. Freedom seems to be uh, the great driving force behind the human spirit. You know, that Statue of Liberty, I think that's a beautiful symbol. And if I knew more about mythology, I'd probably be able to relate these ideas and images to old symbols of freedom. But I can only do what I'm able to. <laughs> Sorry. So I wrote that yesterday because this is often on my mind. When I was locked up in Japan, um, if you want to go to my Jailed in Japan series, plug in, uh, you can hear all about it. But I had a cellmate who was a Yakuza member. His name was Taich. He was 39 years old. He had spent the majority of his life about or at least half of it behind bars and he had this playful spirit he had so much vigor and energy and juice and creativity within him more so than anyone else i knew he was a remarkable specimen and struck me very deeply and i remember there was a talk that jordan peterson gave um, was in one of his classroom lectures, I believe. And he was talking about the peak period of creativity in men also coincides with the peak period of criminality in men. I believe, you'll have to check for the specifics, but he said the peak criminality in men is the age of 15 to 25. That's when men are most likely to do something outside the bounds of law. And I'm pretty sure if you look at, you know, the people who, who, you know, sort of make the biggest noise or ruckus mostly, it's, you know, young guys. You know, they look shifty, you know. They're, they're not um, as domesticated as their fathers. And also the peak creativity in men between the age of 15 and 25, I think he used examples of how most of the developments in mathematics comes from younger men. Um, so what's, is there a correlation between criminality and creativity? Well, I think there is. When I met Teich, uh, he was the master criminal and he was also the most creative. And so I have this, this is, um, actually I don't know if, is it this one? Oh, maybe it is. It's Oscar Wilde, the picture of Dorian Gray. And there was a line in here. Sorry, I've now lost my place. And I'm becoming very 
self-conscious because <laughs> I hate to be taken unawares. It's not that novel. Um, it's an excellent novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Really enjoy that. Um, but this is Oscar Wilde, The Importance of Being Earnest in Other Plays, and it is in the introduction where the person writing the introduction says, it is worth looking very briefly at a few of Wilde's remarks about the relation of crime to art. So he says in an essay entitled Pen, Pencil, and Poison that Wilde wrote in 1889 about a man who poisoned several people, Wilde suggests that an artist of genius is scarcely subject to our ethical judgments. Um, and there's more that he goes on and he talks about sort of this desire for new sensations that um, often perhaps I infer leads us outside of the bounds of ethical judgments or the bounds of civilization's established mores. And so I just want, I'm not trying to say that if you want to be more creative, you need to become a criminal. Not at all. Not at all. Um, but just that there is a link. Because civilization, which keeps us, you know, I guess in the idea or the theory from murdering one another, but I don't, and then if you read Rousseau, the French famous uh, philosopher of the 18th century, and his noble savage theory, which gets, is it short shrift? I've never really used that term, but gets sort of denigrated um, as too idealistic. Uh Rousseau thought that our, our nature actually is not inherently violent and destructive, but that it is the corruption of civilization and technology um, that makes us so. Uh, I sort of agree with that. I sort of agree with that. No matter what the paleontologists and anthropologists say, there's something, there's something that uh, resonates with that. Maybe it's wishful thinking. Maybe it's the inner light. Who knows? But I do wonder if our civilization is actually keeping us all safe or just keeping us in line. Sort of like, what do you learn when you're a child at elementary school? Yeah, you learn the multiplication table. You learn how to write in cursive. But uh, the most important thing that they drill in you is to stand in line and to stay silent, right? Which most boys fail at. So the people who go outside the bounds, the genius, the creative genius, the artist, and the criminals, they have a, a rough time being one of the herd, but they also enjoy those flights of imagination, those flights of sensation. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say on that today. Uh, this was a random new type of video. I just, uh, there's a little drizzle coming down outside. Uh, it's quiet, everyone in my house is sleeping. And I just started pulling books at random. And I remember I had a writing that was similar to something I found. And I thought I would share it with you. My name is Ryan Freeman. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you soon. Bye.